Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. We're gonna now work with Auto Layout. So we're gonna pretty much copy what we have here and we're gonna set up our Auto Layout button in the same exact manner. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, I sort of glossed over the height here. It was a little incorrect. It's really, the, the status bar is 20 points tall and half a button is 40, which is how I got the math. So I just clarified that a little bit. Uh, it's a, a little bit of math, don't worry about it. That's just to move it around. If you're using auto layout, you don't have to think about math, which is why I like auto layout. So you don't have to think about all the positional logic to set up your buttons. All right, so let's just copy this function. And anytime you can't keep up, just pause the video and you can continue. And now I have all the source code you can download at the link down below. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna do Command C and then I'm gonna paste it down here. Now we're gonna rename this method called setup animate button. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. And once we do that, we are going to now rename and create a new button. So we have the button one here. We're gonna create another variable called button two. And it's gonna be a UI button and we can go ahead and just create it like that. Now what we have to do is we have to copy and paste this. Now this is a little bit tricky but this will save you some time so you don't have to retype everything. You can just paste this in here. So just replace any button one with button two. And we don't need a target right now, so I'm gonna comment that line out. I don't want it to do anything. Um, you don't want to call it, we don't want to do this right now. So we'll just take out the action. You can add an action later. We're not going to deal with that right now. We're gonna focus on the auto layout. Now there's one more button one, so I'm gonna replace that with a button two. Okay, pause the video, and double check and make sure that your setup animate button changes everything from button one to button two. All right, so now that that is set up, what we're gonna look at are the auto layout constraints. So I no longer want to use the bounds. We're actually just gonna delete that. We don't need that code anymore. We're gonna set up the, the background image. We're gonna set up the title, the font, all of that good stuff. Now what we want to do is we want to add the auto layout. All right, so this is how we position. Now, if I bring up the simulator right now, uh, hopefully it should build. We want the button to appear on the bottom and just hug the bottom sort of like this little panel is. And we want it to touch the sides like our top button is. So the top button was expressed in auto layout using the storyboard file. So if I click on it, you can see we've got a leading edge to the margin, we've got a trailing edge to the margin, we've got a distance from the top, and we've got the actual size of the button. Now the size of the button is based on the image asset, which is 80 points tall, and it's going to, on the instruments panel, you can see that on the inspector panel, you can see its height, you can see its width, and that's gonna change depending on how big our actual iPhone is that's running. So let's jump back over to code. We're gonna set up the constraints to add it to our, our top and bottom. And so we need to add this starting edge, which is called our leading, our trailing edge, and then our bottom edge. And so we're gonna do that all with auto layout. So let's just jump back into the code. All right, so in order to do this, we're gonna use the NS layout constraint, and we're gonna create local variables for these and then add them all at once. So let's go and do the left and then the right edge, and then we'll do our bottom edge. This is a little bit verbose. It's gonna do exactly what you do when you're in the storyboard file. You just have to type a lot more. So feel free to pause at any point and you can catch up. So let's do the left edge, then we'll do our right edge, and then we'll do our bottom. And then we'll add all constraints. All right, so for our left edge, we'll do a let statement here. We will say the left edge constraint, and I'll call it the left button edge constraint, just so it's a little bit more verbose. There's gonna be an NS layout constraint. And then you'll wanna use autocomplete because there are a lot of options here. So just press enter and then select this and then press enter again, that'll autocomplete. Now we are focused on the first item. So our item here is going to be the button two. And we want the NS layout 
attribute. This is another enum, and we're going to want the left side. So we'll just do the left, and we want to relate it to the containing view, which is going to be our self.view. So this relation we want to be equal. We want it to be right on the edge. So we'll do an NS layout relation, and then we'll do the equal relation. With that, we're going to do two item. Now this is the view, so we just can say view. That will give us that property, which is going to be our containing view. And then the attribute here is going to be our NS layout attribute. Now you have to type these correctly. Auto layout, or sorry, autocomplete is going to recommend some that aren't going to be the right one for the right property. And then this one is going to be our leading margin. Okay, so that's going to give us the indentation of about 20 points, which is the default for a margin. And then our multiplier, we need this to be a 1. You can do sort of positional percentage-based layouts if you don't use 1, but we're not going to do that for this. We are going to keep it right on that edge. And the constant is going to be 0. We don't need it to be indented anymore. Now, what we can do is we can add all these constraints one by one. And so I'm going to have one statement for adding the constraints. Now, if you were to add these to your button two, you would get an error. So if I show you what that error looks like, we'll say add constraints. And we're going to add them in an array format. So I'm going to do the angle brackets. And this will be our left bot, bot sorry, our left button edge constraint. And we'll go ahead and run this, see what happens. And nothing's happening because we haven't called this code yet. Now, I just want to make sure that this is working. So we're just going to call setup animate button at the very top. So right underneath the setup button, let's set up the animate button. And we'll go ahead and run. We should see it right away, and it gives us a crash. Now, if we look at our crash down here, we're going to scroll all the way to the top, and it's going to give us an uh, error message. Now, this top error message is really important, and it goes into detail that the view needs to be in the hierarchy in it. So it's not in the hierarchy. And what we've done is we accidentally added it to the wrong thing. So the, the view attribute is causing this to crash. What we need to make sure is that we don't say button two, we say view. So pause the video and fix that bug. And then you should be able to run this again. Just make sure you've called setup animate button in your View did load so that it automatically runs and will be good to go. All right, so we're not seeing the button anywhere because it doesn't have a defined size yet. So let's set up the right edge. So we're going to do this one at a time, but you're not going to see things all the time. So our right button edge. And just press Enter for autocomplete. That's going to make this a lot easier. We're going to do button 2, and the attribute is going to be very similar, but it's going to be the right side. And then our relation is going to be equal. And our item is going to be the view again. So we want it to be the containing view, the canvas for our app screen. And the attribute here is going to be our trailing margin. The multiplier again is going to be 1. We don't want to do anything fancy here. And the constant is going to be right on that edge. So we can go ahead and add that last one. I instinctively ran it using the command R hotkey. Um, and you can do the same thing, or you can hit the run button up in the top left corner. So here we'll add the right button edge constraint as our list of constraints grows. And I'm still not seeing anything yet. So we're going to get uh, an error. Oh, and this is our other issue. So in order to get auto layout to actually work, it's already been given some constraints, and we have to disable those existing constraints. So this is where we need to disable the auto resizing constraints. And you have to do this for anything that you add in code. And so what we need to say is button two dot set translates auto sizing, auto resizing mask into constraints. We need to set this to false. So if you don't do this, what you're going to see is what we see down here. So we've got this issue, and it's printing out this message. It's breaking a constraint. And if you actually read the, the issue, it's saying it's unable to satisfy the constraints. 
Note, if you're seeing this, something that you don't understand, then it's telling you to look at the documentation for the Translates Auto Resizing Mask into Constraints, which is what we're looking at right now. So once we get that fixed, we can go ahead and run this, and we might see something different. All right, so now I'm seeing the Animate Auto Layout button. And right now we called it the same thing. Let's call it something different so that we can actually tell this is a different button. So we'll just call it Auto Layout Slide. We're gonna make this button slide up and down. So if we rerun, we should now see this button. Now it has a, a height because of the image that we're using for the background. If we didn't have that, then the title would be giving it a height and that would give us something to see. Now we wanna make it so it sticks to the bottom. So let's go ahead and add our last constraint. Now you can pause the video and keep up. I'm just gonna go ahead and type this one out. Going from the bottom, equal, to the view. Bottom margin, multipliers one, constant zero. We'll add this to our list of constraints that we're adding. We'll go ahead and run and you should see it hug the bottom. All right, so the bottom edge is not gonna give us that margin like we have on the left and right sides. So what we need to do is change the constant here. Now, changing the constant is gonna either move it up or down. So let's see what happens when we do 20, which is the standard default. We're gonna see that it goes down. So that's the opposite direction we wanna go. So in order to get the direction we want, we use a negative 20 and we rerun. All right, and so now it is right on top of our panel and we're good to go. We've added the auto layout that we need to describe this button. And in the, the next video, we can work on making it so that this button is going to slide in and out using some animation, adding some show and hide logic to our application. Hey, this is Paul Soul. Real quick, I wanna interrupt you. You're watching this tutorial on YouTube and I actually have a course with all the source code, all of the video files that you can actually download. So what you need to do is just jump on over, click the link and you can jump into this course. It's free. It's gonna show you how to animate using auto layout in your iPhone apps with Swift. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead, click the link and jump into the course. It's free and you can get started with building a nice animation using auto layout.